Well, let's get back to our top story because after months of tacit no, it's now a firm no from the Liberal Party. Peter Dutton is allowing his backbenchers a free vote on the issue, but the reality is that most within the Liberal Party do not support the Albanese government's model for a voice to Parliament. Joining me now is Wang Kumara and Barkingi Man and Voice Referendum Working Group member Sean Gordon. Sean, a pleasure to have you on the program. Were you surprised by this formal position that that's where the Liberals landed yesterday? Uh, thanks for having me, Laura. Um, look, I'm, I'm not surprised by the position. Uh, I'm surprised by the timing. Um, the, the timing... Um, yeah, came came as a shock, really. You know, given given that um, you know the coalition have just uh, just approved two members to participate in the in the uh, the six week committee process now, um, which give which will give all Australians the opportunity to feed into mm. um, the, the the question and the amendment that's been put forward. I'm surprised that they've come out um, you know before that process has even commenced. Um, so that, that for me is, I guess, is the real disappointment at this stage. Well, I kind of wonder why they're coming up with this alternative uh, now, not even after the committee stage, but not before the last election, you know, not after officially Malcolm Turnbull rejected uh, the Uluru statement from the heart by via a drop to a newspaper, didn't even do it in any formal way. But... When it comes to the details of what the Liberal Party is proposing, their argument is it's not no. It's just they want to ensure it's a local voice. What's wrong with that concept? Well, I'm, 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 I'm not an academic. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a politician and I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I'm a practitioner. And I'm fortunate enough... Thank goodness on all my... three of those uh, <laughs> points, Sean, as a practitioner. I'm, 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 I'm fortunate that I, I work with communities right across the country. I, I led the Empowered Communities work from its inception in, in 2013 until I stepped away in 2019. And that was working with eight regions around the country to help establish regional governance structures. I'm the independent chair for the Barclay Regional Deal in Central Northern Territory. Uh, I chair the National Set Nexus Centre for Place-Based Collaboration. Uh, and I've established the Bering Regional Alliance on the Central Coast. I'm working on establishing a regional government structure in Newcastle. Mm. So I actually work with communities in establishing local and regional voices. The, the, the challenge, and, and the government know this and, and, and the opposition know this, is we can establish those regional voices and those regional voices can come together and work through the challenges and, and come up with solutions to those challenges in their communities. But what you find is when you're coming up with those solutions, the blockages that exist are generally further up the line. And when and I say further up the line, it, it's either state policy and laws or it's federal policy and laws that make it very difficult for communities to be able to organise themselves and challenge the types of uh, decisions that are being made um, from Canberra and from your capital cities. Hmm. And, and so just putting regional voices in place isn't going to be enough to unblock decisions that are made in Canberra. Uh, and the types of decisions that are made in Canberra, whether it's by parliamentarians or whether it's by executive government, um, have very little input from local communities. And so this blanket, you know, rollout policies of one size fits all isn't going to cut it. Uh, it hasn't worked. Uh, if we're going to give local uh, and community voices a say, and what Dutton didn't say in his decision, in his, in his position yesterday, uh, is how is he going to structure those local and regional voices? What is going to give power or authority to those voices to be able to push back mm. um, when federal government laws and policies are impacting on those communities? And, do that through and, and how are they going to plug into that? Now, that's the challenge. Yeah, OK. So what you're saying yeah, is that the, the Liberals' proposal could be lie. potentially way more wily uh, harder to control, if that's the, the best term, um, and might not actually lead to better outcomes because, as you say, there's blockages at a higher level. What, what, what's, what's going to be the interface in this proposed solution that, that um, Dutton's put forward? What is the interface if you go and establish all of these local and regional voices around the country without an interface 
then you've basically got these communities working in isolation without any real any right. real decision powers to create genuine change. And so the importance of establishing the, the national voice, which is fed up from local and regional voices, we've got to understand that the model is about local and regional voices feeding up into a national voice. So their representation from a local level is fed up into, into um, the federal government. Um, and that information then should be able to feed down. But that is about unblocking the, the systemic systems that have failed our people for so long. Right, OK, so let's get to, to the nub of where the, the campaign will go to uh, then, Sean. Um, you know, we've already seen the Liberal Party frame this as a, a Canberra-based uh, voice, not a local one. That seemed to be where the dividing line is. You mentioned there's a committee stage there. Is the committee stage, with two weeks of, uh, of consultation allowed uh, from the community where they'll uh, take submissions, is this just to essentially back in what is already there or would you be happy with substantial changes? Well, firstly, let me respond to the, to the, the, the Canberra-based voice. Right now, the Canberra-based voice is, is a bunch of elected politicians who are failing to address the disparity that exists in Aboriginal communities. Mm. What we're advocating for is a voice to Canberra to keep account those, those Canberra-based voices who aren't listening to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people across the country. Uh, and so that's an important piece to, to make sure that we understand. The Canberra-based voice already exists. They've existed for, for, for 130 years. They've, they've failed, uh, 122 years, they've failed our people in regards to the types of decisions that they're making for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. We're arguing and advocating for a voice to Canberra to ensure that there are greater accountabilities put in place around the decisions that they need to be making in regards to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Look, the, I've, I've, I've been on the referendum working group um, for the last um, six months. I also lead an organisation called Uphold and Recognise, and, and I've been leading that. I've been the chair of that organisation uh, for eight years now. And we work on the right of politics. We work with conservatives mm -hmm. and liberals to bring them on the journey. And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm I'm probably more disappointed in in the coalitions uh, and and, I, and I'll throw nationals in this in their decision um, so early in this piece because they've yeah. really they've really failed to engage genuinely. Julie and Lisa came out on Monday with a position. Monday, the referendum working group have meeting for more than have been meeting um, since the the prime minister announced Gama. Uh, he's established the referendum working group. He's established the the expert panel. He's established the referendum engagement group. Julian comes out on Monday and puts a position forward. The appropriate position Julian should have put forward was six months ago when this process started mm -hmm. to allow for the conversations and, to, and the debate to happen. Yeah. Jul and Julian and Peter attended two meetings of the working group. Um, they never turned up with a position. They turned up with 15, with, with 15 um, questions. Mm -hmm. I believe the questions have been answered in regards to the principles. Um, but exactly. Uh, if yeah. you want to and I don't think these questions have been designed to help the process. They've been designed to kill it. Um, that, that is the problem. Uh, Julian Lisa is the Shadow Attorney General and Minister for Indigenous Affairs. The Liberal Party announced their position yesterday. We've tried to get him on the program. We're told he's not available for a week. So not even justifying the position, not even out there explaining what their position is and unable and or perhaps unwilling to answer questions about his own model. And, and look, the disappointment, the disappointment of the model, and this is this is my frustration. The, the, the Prime Minister mentioned Alice Springs quite a bit. Uh, uh, the, uh, Dutton mentioned Alice Springs quite a bit yesterday mm. um, in his address. There was a time, you know, in the last ten years, where we had a coalition government at a federal level. We had a, a country Liberal Party government. Right. at a Northern Territory level. And they did nothing. And we had a country Liberal Party at a local government level in the Northern Territory. What they did was put punitive measures in place through the Northern Territory intervention. They put punitive measures in place in regards to the cashless debit card, but they did nothing to empower the, the community to form a regional government structures to advise on our 
the the alcohol bans could be could be better improved mm -hmm. to advise on how they might transition off the cashless debit card or transition off the alcohol bans yeah. or even transition off the northern territory and so over that 10 year period a nine year period of being in government they failed to give the local indigenous community of Alice Springs mm. and non-indigenous community of Alice Springs a structure that gives them voice to be able to transition off those those major reform initiatives. Yeah. That's a failure of this government. That's a failure of a government that's been in power that were, that was in power for nine years that mm. failed to act and empower local people to be able to make the, the necessary decisions to transition off these punitive structures yeah. that were put in place. Okay, Sean Gordon, thanks so much for your time. Uh, appreciate it.